buttons, buttons, buttons. This tutorial is not just about buttons, but I'm going to be demonstrating a process I saw from a previous YouTube video. I'm going to link that in the YouTube description, but I've expanded on it a bit more to make it more flexible and dynamic. And so this process will allow you to create components that are extremely dynamic and flexible. You can choose to create these Boolean values or these properties that allow you to determine stuff like if you want your button to have an icon um, and you also allow you to customize the icons very easily within your components and the variants. Just looking at this, obviously this is all from a, a single component variant and the possibilities are really just endless and it makes your life much easier as a designer working with a big Figma project. So as always, make sure to subscribe. Let's get started. Now, wait one second. I want you to check out designcourse.com, which is going to be launching here in 60 days or January 4th of 2022. Um, if it's not launched by, based on the time you're watching this, I want you to enter your email address because it is my new, very robust UI UX design course. And it's not just a course with video only. There's also interactive UI tests. There's also design mentorship with challenges and so much more. So if you really want to level up your game and become a great UI UX designer, definitely enter your email or if you're watching this at a time that it's released, consider joining. All right, let's get started. Alrighty, so let's get started here with this project. You can download this starter project. It's a fig file, .fig, um, in the YouTube description. And then you can just drag it onto Figma uh, where, the, where it lists all your projects out and then you'll be able to open it. Um, so right here, we wanna have a call to action. This is where our button's going to go. Now, if you're kind of a stickler when it comes to alignment, we can come over here to turn on the grid and then we'll take our rectangle tool. Now, some people, they kinda just, they'll design a button without context. Like, they'll, they won't put it in a design. Maybe they'll just do it off here in the canvas or whatever. I like to see what it looks like first in the context of the design um, that we're working with. So uh, we can hide that now and by the way, when it comes to a call to action button, you really want it to stand out well. So we're going to use this color right here. And ideally, if you're working with a real project with many artboards and stuff, you wanna um, save this here to your, uh, not that button, sorry, um, your color styles right here. So you'd save this, name it primary, whatever, um, and all that good stuff. Um, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna round the edges just a bit. I like five, typically. It's very small, works well. And then we're gonna get our type tool. We're gonna to come over here, left click, and we're just gonna put uh, download now, something like that. Um, I'm using Nunito, bold, size 21. That's all that's good stuff right there. Um, and then additionally, we're gonna start off with an icon as well. Um, right click plugins, we're gonna to go to Iconify, and we're just going to get a download one right here. Just type in download, hit search, and you'll find this right there. All right, so now what we'll do is put in, I uh, we'll get it placed in there and then we will double click into it and change the fill to white. And there's a button, all right? Very simple. Um, if you just stop at this and then you just, you know, you have a bunch of artboards um, and you, or frames rather, just, just different layouts and you start to add this button in different places and then you wanna change it or the client says, hey, let's change this or your employer says that, let's change the color, let's change the type. You're gonna have to do it a million times, all right? So that's why we wanna do things a little bit more intelligently um, when it comes to this stuff. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is um, I wanna see how this button responds based on this artboard when we adjust it in and out, kind of like testing responsive design out on you know an actual website that's been realized in front of development. So right now, this is what's happening. It's not ideal at all. Um, and the reason I think this is important is because if you do make, if you, if you go to take this button and you replicate it across another artboard that might be a little bit larger uh, of a phone size or a tablet, it, it just makes your life a little bit easier sometimes when it comes to um, scaling it and making sure things are just situated where they should be. So what we wanna do is the first thing, um, and there's sometimes you can mix and match these steps. Um, what we'll do is we are going to make this so that um, when we expand this artboard in and out, we wanna make sure that this element right here um, is structured left and right. So now when we pull it out, it's gonna be left and right. 
All right, so the next step is we want to take both of these elements and we're going to auto layout it. So we're going to add plus right here and that automatically creates an auto layout. We can also do this to align it here to the absolute center. So when we do that and they're kind of essentially grouped up into an auto layout, it's almost sort of working. But now what we want to do is we also have to have foresight. We, we, I want this to be a button that has a hover state and that has an interesting animation that will take place with Smart Animate. Um, so what I envision is having like a, a, an ellipse that kind of grows out from the center. Um, so to do that, we have to think ahead a little bit before we make it a component. It makes life easier. What we'll do is we're gonna duplicate this rectangle four, which is the button right here. So Control D. Now we have rectangle five. Now our intention isn't to keep just a second copy of it. It's going to serve as a mask. So what we'll do is we're gonna take an ellipse and just somewhere around the center, I'm going to hold, oops, we don't want that to happen. Um, let's see here, what we'll do is just, I'll just come over here off the side and we're gonna put it near the center. And then we're going to hold shift, select that rectangle five and then we're going to come out and click this mask. That way we can make this um, ellipse any size we want and it will still stay within the confines of that button container or that rectangle five right here, as you can see. Uh, let's, let's select our ellipse right here. We need to give it a color um, and this color will be that and then just darker. Right around there is pretty good. All right, so now we want to make sure this is placed underneath where I the actual, let's see here, we have our mask group, we have our frame. We want it to be underneath the frame. So let's collapse the frame. And let me make sure this works. All right, there we go. So now it's placed where it needs to be. Let's open up that um, the, the mask group here and change our ellipse to 0% opacity because by default, the default state is obviously without that. All right, we're, we're getting very close. So now we're gonna take everything, notice it's selecting all these layers, and we're going to create a component. Control-Alt-K or Command-Option-K um, or just come up here and just hit Component. So now it's a component. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so we have to reset some of that stuff. When you make it a component, it messes things up sometimes. Um, we change it to left and right, and there we go. Perfect, staying in the center, exactly what we want at this time. Okay, all right, so now that we have that done, what we wanna do is create um, a variant out of it. Uh, a variant is a relatively new feature. I've talked about this a couple videos, but it's over here, it's, it's, it's in, in this section right there. So we're gonna move this off here, just so we have some work, space to work with, because when we click on variants, it's gonna expand it into this little container right here. All right, so what we'll do now is we're going to create the state for hover. So we're gonna double click into here. We're gonna get access to our ellipse two. We're going to drag it up holding shift and alt right around there just so it consumes the whole button and then we're gonna change this to 100%. So now we can see it is darker. All right, next up, we're going to select our component in the, out, the whole outline or whatever you wanna call it. And we're going to add um, a property. So property one by default, we're gonna change to hover. All right, then we're gonna select on our first one and we're gonna change this property here from default just to false because this is not the hover version. This is, so we're gonna put true. Now here's where the fun stuff comes in. We're gonna to go to assets, drag in our component get it placed you know, roughly where we want, and then we're gonna hit play. Now, let me get things, um, let me get this moved over here for a second, or rather this way, there we go. Now watch this. It doesn't, it, when, we, when we drag it in, sorry, I shouldn't have hit play yet because we haven't done anything. When we drag it in, we have this option of hover to like turn it to a hover state or whatever, that's not necessarily what we want. You're gonna see why this hover little um, 
toggle switch becomes important um, in a little bit. So for it, in order for that hover to work and for us to see it animate in, we have to switch to prototype, take this, drag it down. We're gonna change this to while hovering and smart animate, we'll leave it there, 300 milliseconds. And now, there we go, look at that. And what's also cool is because we made it so that we can easily adjust the size, we can move this in, that works very solid. Now, what about if we wanted to change the height? That works as well. Okay, so now what if, for instance, we wanted to change this so that we can have another button state without an icon? Well, to do that, let's go ahead and duplicate this. We'll just kind of move this down a bit and take this this bounding box here, just uh, decrease that. We'll get rid of um, any of this stuff right here. We're gonna switch to the design tab. And then what we'll do is we're going to duplicate, or double click rather, not duplicate. We're gonna delete this, which we can easily do because it was an auto layout. Then we'll duplicate this. And we wanna make sure we access the correct layer here. Um, when we open this up, we wanna come out to rectangle four. We don't wanna choose the mask group and try to change that color. Um, we wanna change it to the hover state color. And again, it would be a good idea to add these to the library and all that stuff if this were a real project. So we'll change this to that same color. Next up, we're gonna go back to our component one and we're going to add a new property by clicking the three dots, add new property. We're gonna put icon and then we're going to over here, uh, specify icon is false. Icon is also false. Oh wait, I'm slow. Icon is true. <laughs> it's a little bit late. Icon is true. All right, and then this one's gonna be icon false. Hover state is gonna be false. And then right here, icon is false as well, but hover state is true. Okay, so now what we can do temporarily, obviously this is gonna look silly in the context of this layout. We're gonna move things down. Um, let's take these, just kind of move them down here, move that back up, and we're gonna have a couple buttons. So now we're gonna go back to our assets, we're gonna drag on, download now, or rather, we could just replicate this, holding Alt, Shift, move down. And so now we can t toggle icon off. Look at that. Now, in order for our hover state to work, because it's not working on this, we have to go back to our prototype section. We'll drag this here, oh no drag this here rather, and this is going to be a while hovering, and it's going here, all smart animate, all that's working. All right, so why is it changing? I, uh, It's not animating in like we want it to with that, um, that little circle. Well, what we'll do is come back over here. We're going to change or take our ellipse, drag it out, shift and alt, Make sure it's 100%, all right? And make sure we are dealing with this same color here. And there we go. Now, one final tip. One thing you might be wondering, it's like, okay, we have this really flexible button. We can change the, the copy in the button um, to like whatever, and it still stays centered, it's awesome. Um, what if we wanna change the icon? That's gonna be difficult, like changing the icon on the component instance. It's not really possible um, just by trying to drag in an, a new icon here or just deleting this this right here. It's, it's, it's not going to work the way you want it to. So here is a workaround. So what we can do is let's get a, um, let's use Iconify real quick. Um, we'll just do like right, just type in right. Um, We'll get, yeah, we'll just use this one right here. And we'll make sure I, we'll double click it, make it white. Oh God, it's gonna be one of these things. <laughs> Let's uh, adjust it there, there we go. All right, so then what we can do is, we can just drag that right there. All right, so that's a right arrow. You can do this for a bunch of them. And then what we do is, we're gonna come down here, we can see um, this is the actual arrow and we can hide it, all right? 
Now, what we'll also wanna do is replicate it for any other um, variants that you have of that particular button. Right now, we just have the hover. You may also have you know, focused and all that stuff and, and pressed and whatever. But what we'll do is now we have to replicate it um, and that's up here. So this one's here. Let's get these closer to each other. Um, let's, so this is that one. And this has to go underneath it. Okay, so this and this right underneath each other. Or this one's at the top. What am I doing? There we go. Okay, so now I we're going to expand both of these. And this one has that icon that this one doesn't. So where it says download now, we have to open frame six. We will alt drag it down and we're gonna put it underneath download now. All right, so now watch this. We will double click this and we'll come in here. We will hide that and then we'll bring it back. Look at that and it still works. Now we have interchangeable icons. Very, 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 very awesome. Uh, so we'll do one more duplicate down here just to show you how cool this is. And this one, of course, same thing. We could just reverse this, bring it back. All of them work. That is so exciting. It's a massive time saver, really flexible, dynamic buttons. All right, everybody always fascinated with all the new techniques that we have available at our disposable with tools like Adobe XD and Figma. If you know of perhaps some other tricks or even a more efficient way to do what I did, please share it here in the YouTube description. Uh, mention me on Twitter if you wish and also give other ideas if you wanna see other things uh, in terms of workflow. Anyhow, as always, make sure to sub and I will see you soon. Goodbye.